Hello and welcome to another episode of Practical Welding Television. I'm your host, Amanda Carlson. In part one of our series on oxyacetylene welding, we talked about equipment setup and basic principles. In part two, we're going to put those principles to practice. Larry's going to take us through cutting aspects while Mike's going to take us through the welding and brazing. So stay tuned, this is part two. Okay, just to review uh, quickly before we get started on the procedure for uh, turning on and adjusting the uh, oxygen and acetylene. We want to make sure that our tanks are securely chained up. Uh, no chance of uh, falling off or falling over. We want to make sure that our uh, fittings are all tight and we want to make sure that our hose is in good condition. We want to make sure that our adjustment screws are back out, easy to turn. Once we've uh, made sure of that, we want to turn our uh, tanks on and we want to turn them both on slowly and remember we turn the acetylene on only about a half a turn no more than one full turn make sure that we have pressure on the first gauge slowly and we open it all the way back seating the valve we can adjust our pressures. When we adjust our pressures, we want to make sure that the valve or the gas that we're adjusting is cracked open just a little bit. Now we can adjust our working pressure up. I'm going to adjust this to four to five PSI on the acetylene. Then I close the valve. Now I'm opening the oxygen valve, just cracking it open. I'm gonna adjust the pressure on the oxygen the same, about four to five. PSI when I close the valve. Now our pressures are uh, properly adjusted and those are the pressures that are recommended for this torch and this tip. If you have a, um, a different size uh, tip on here, we may have to adjust our pressures just a little bit. So always go by the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay, okay now that we have our tanks on and our pressure is adjusted. Now we're going to uh, get the rest of our equipment ready to go before we start our welding. One of the first things we want to do is to make sure that our torch is comfortable in our hand. You want the torch to balance in your hand and you want to adjust the tip in the direction, a slight angle in the direction that you're going to be welding. The reason for that is because it makes it more comfortable and you don't have to rotate uh, the torch. You, you want it to balance in your hand uh, comfortably without having to fight it. So once we get our balance correct and our angle on our tip correct, we snug up the tip, make sure it's good and uh, snug. You, even though it's a hex uh, head on here, you don't take a wrench and tighten it extremely tight. There are O-rings in here and it can ruin them if you tighten it too tight. So I just a good, uh, very uh, snug finger tight. Then, before I get started, the welding rod that we're gonna to use today uh, is uh, 1 16th in diameter. This is for a gas welding rod. And for beginners, what I recommend doing is taking this 36 inch link when it's new and cutting it in half. It makes it much easier to handle. So just somewhere in the middle, cut it. And now, bring it down to a size that's much more easy um, to manage. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do then is go ahead and light the torch on my striker. Just crack open the acetylene valve, maybe about 16th to an eighth of a turn. Put the striker out in front and on an angle. Light the torch. I adjust the acetylene until I get it until the uh, soot begins to stop and I get a nice flare on the end. And then I adjust the oxygen up very slowly until this outer cone just dis disappears into the inner cone and that's a new over 
adjust the torch by bringing on too much oxygen they make it sound like a jet engine that you do not want that's an oxidizing flame we just want to bring it to what is called the neutral flame okay now I'm ready to weld now what I like to do I like or first of all you need to make yourself comfortable but I also sometimes will rest my arm on the bench especially as a beginner it helps make you uh, more steady and it makes welding a lot easier once you are steady so now what I'm going to do I'm going to preheat the metal I'm going to bring it up to a puddle with the torch then I'm going to maintain the cone distance to my work keep that at approximately an eighth of an inch somewhere in that ballpark if you get too close it'll pop on you if you get too far away you won't it won't melt the metal properly now also another thing you want to keep in mind is your torch angle we want to have our tip in the direction we're going to be welding and I'm going to make once I get the metal melting then I'm going to uh, make small circles and with the torch tip. You establish the puddle with the torch and then you add the rod in the puddle that you have made with the torch. The larger your circles, the larger your bead will be. gas welding bead now I'm going to demonstrate brazing the difference between the two gas welding is actually a fusion process where you're melting the base metal and fusing the filler material into the weld zone and making uh, it all become one the, the filler material and the base material becomes one now on brazing it's a little bit different we're, it's done at a much lower temperature we're a uh, little bit above 800 degrees Fahrenheit for brazing. Brazing is an adhesion process. It's not fusion. So when I uh, make this bead, I'm not going to be melting the base metal. I am bringing up, bring it up to uh, the proper temperature, which is about uh, a, a reddish color or an orange. At that point, the brass will start to flow, but it will not uh, fuse itself into the base metal. It adheres itself to it. So I'm going to adjust my torch, light and adjust my torch. It melts, I'm going to add the brass onto it. Brazing filler material. There's getting up to proper temperature now. I'm gonna add brazing material at the proper temperature. If it's too hot, it will flow too much. If it's not hot enough, it won't flow at all. So you got to maintain that proper temperature all the way down. And the gas welding bead. The brazing is a much uh, larger bead as compared to the 
the gas welding bay. Now, if you notice, I welded without any gloves. As a general rule for beginners, I highly suggest that you do wear gloves. I've been gas welding for many years and I've just uh, grown accustomed and I know my technique to where I will not burn my hands. What I recommend are light duty welding gloves such as these. They're very lightweight, easy to, uh, easy to handle and they have a very good feel for them. Uh, so I, I would recommend this type of glove. The type of glove that you do not want to get are these large gauntlet type welding gloves. They're too heavy and they don't have a very good feel to them and you'll have a hard time manipulating the torques and the filler rod at the same time. So I do not re recommend these. They're, these should be used for stick welding. Okay, now we changed the, the torch over to a cutting torch so we can cut the steel with this. I will demonstrate this now on how we're going to set the torches, the regulators, and cut the metal then. So right now we will then open the tanks and open the oxygen all the way up for the double seal like Mike said. Open this one, one turn. Open them slowly to one turn. Now we will crack this valve here for the oxygen. We're gonna run it in, so we got 25 pounds. You adjust the, adjust the flame out so that you just barely have a little bit of soot and then you add your oxygen to it. Bringing the cone back up to where your preheat tubes are just showing here and then to test it, you go like that. If the preheat tubes stay the same, then you can have it set right. Okay, now we're gonna cut a piece of uh, 5 16 steel. We're gonna hold the torch straight up and down and we're gonna have about an eighth of an inch clearance from that blue tip down to the metal. When the edge of it gets red, then I will hit the trigger and we will start our cut then. If you have any questions on Axia settling, welding, or cutting, please feel free to email me. On behalf of Mike, Larry, and everyone here at Rock Valley College, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.